going to go ahead and we've got our movie in here. I'm going to go ahead and start filling these drop zones. Now one way to do it is to just click on, um, let's get back actually here. And oh, real briefly, just talk about what I did. I was in an event in iPhoto and I just double clicked in the white in between the thumbnails and I went back to all the events and you can go, you, you can search through photos, you know, depending on how you have your stuff sorted out any way you want, but I've got it in the events and then I was, you know, in this event. Now, if you want to leave this event, just double click in the white grid there. So you can take stuff and start dropping it into these drop zones. But as you can see, you need to come down here and you need to kind of pan around, make the other drop zones available. So another way to get around that is to click on this uh, box with the arrow and all the drop zones show up. So that makes it a little simpler. And I'll just put one right there. I'll put another one there. And obviously, you know, if you had a, a theme to your project, you know, a, a family trip or whatever, you would want to put some of your uh, your best shots, you know, in here. I'm just grabbing some random shots. And then what I do want to do is I do want to add a video just to show you that you can add a video. And I think it might, yeah, it might freeze up just a little bit depending on your machine and and depending if you're recording the screen. So that didn't take very long. Let's go ahead and close the drop zones by hitting that and let's just see what this looks like. I'm going to drag this down and hit play. I think that video was the first drop zone so it's going to take a second here to loop back around. There it is. Anyways, my wife trying to focus her iPhone. A little blurry. Okay, so that that's pretty cool. And I think let's click on this. Actually, when we clicked on there, movie starts. So so we can actually you know if you didn't want that blurry part to show up like right there, we could start it right here, and we can make it end right there, and it's just gonna keep looping around. So. That's pretty cool. You know, you can really fine tune what the viewer is uh, seeing and, and things like, excuse me, and things like that. So let's click out of there. Um, one thing I talked about in one of the uh, part seven uh, iMovie tutorial was that in the advanced tools was the chapter selection. Uh, selection. So if you went ahead and took the time to put those chapter selections in. Then when you drop a movie and you have it set to create a submenu, you're going to get this scene selection. So I'm going to double click on that. And you can see how we have these little thumbnails. Let's see what these look like. So there's no song on here. So if I want a song, if I want the same one or a different one, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to drop one in there. I'll hit play. <laughs> And these are fully edible, so I can get in here and I can make the scenes one through four bigger. I can change the name beginning to uh, whatever I want. So uh, this is fully edible, and again, it's just right click, show an inspector. And in here, you know, we can make this, we can make the movie a still image, and we could, you know, place this marker where we want it to be. It's like if we wanted just not to move and be right there, we just hit still. And if we want the size to be bigger, we can make it bigger. Um, we've got the shadow enabled. But so I kind of like back shadow, so I'm just going to leave that. Let's see what it looks like with that out with the still. So the other ones are moving. This one's sitting still. Fully edible. It's pretty cool. And uh, the other thing I want to talk about is the buttons. So we got some different buttons that we can pick. Let's I haven't really played with that much. And yeah, I think I'm gonna go with no button. This is command Z, undo, undo. I thought we could change this button here, this highlight. Oh, now I guess you can't. Let's undo, undo, undo. Yeah, I, I don't really uh, play with this these buttons here. Oh, here we go. So when I clicked up on this bar, some more options showed up, and here's round and stuff like that. So 
Um, so if you wanted the thumbnail to be round, you could do that. And you got these different shapes, rectangle. And you, know, you could choose these different frames and things like that. So let's uh, go ahead and back out of here. Another thing I want to talk about is this box right here that's got like this kind of looks like the incident command system here. I'm going to double click on that. And you can see this little grid and essentially this is, uh, oh, I'm not sure what happened there. Let's click on that again. This is essentially the layout of our movie. So, you know, we have the, the menu. We have the play movie or the, or the path of the scene selections, which lead to beginning, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. So it's essentially a graph and a, or layout of your DVD. If you did not want this movie, you just wanted the person to put the movie in and have it instantly play, then you would actually delete this, me, uh, this menu and you would go into media, go to movies, find your Mac tutorial one, or in my case, Mac tutorial one, or whatever your movie is, and simply drag it here to this first box, and it says here, drag the, co drag the content here to automatically play when the disc is inserted, and that would void the whole uh, menu and having them have to pick and all that stuff, so that is another option if you don't want to do this menu, but I, I think you can see, like, you know, just how fast you can uh, do this. And, you know, and I got full control over here and make it look just, you know, however I want. It's pretty cool. Um, so, uh, another thing I want to talk about is, real quick is the project info. So, if you're adding tons of movies and tons of slideshows, one uh, thing you want to keep track of here is uh, the project info. You can change the name, change the video mode if you have to as well. You don't have to go into preferences. You can change the encoding to you know, lower it down if you run out of space. And uh, here it's telling me how much space I have. So like right here in the blue is how much space I've used and you might not even be able to see that uh, almost a minute amount. So as you start adding like, you know, real movies and large files, this arrow is gonna go to the right. And so uh, depending if you have a dual layer or a single layer, so let's click on single layer. Yeah, it didn't even really affect it much because I don't I don't have that much uh, stuff in here. That video file I, that I sent over for my movie is probably like a minute long. So, anyways, that's another idea or another place to look to see like how big your project is getting. So I'm gonna close that and I'm gonna sign off for now and see you in the next tutorial. All right, bye. Hey guys, it's Keith. I'm back with part two of the iDVD uh, tutorial. Uh, hopefully I'm not moving uh, too quick. I just wanted to show you though how easy it is to uh, put one of these together. You don't have to put in the time that maybe some people are feeling iMovie would be uh, uh, costing them. But uh, one uh, one thing I did want to talk about is when you uh, open up this drop zone, you know, let's say you don't like this black background and you like the template, you like the layout, you like the way the pictures kind of pan there with the reflection and stuff, but you don't necessarily like the gray background. One thing you can do is you can take a video clip and obviously it's going to depend on the content and the color and stuff like that if it's going to look good with your with the template you've chosen. But I'm actually dropping this on the actual menu drop zone. And you can see now the pictures are still in the same template. So is the font, the transparent box and stuff. But when we hit play, you know, we got a little video going on in the background. And so that's all. That's just going to depend on the look you're going for. So I'm going to unclick that. I'm going to Command Z to undo that. It's just not necessary for uh, what we're doing here. Um, so, you know, pretty much that's it, you know, so like if you wanted to have a bonus uh, features, you know, you could add it there. Uh, if you wanted to add some slideshows, you could add that and uh, just, you know, it depends on what kind of content you're trying to put to your disc. So uh, pretty much this project is ready to be uh, burned to disc. One thing I do want to uh, talk to you about before we uh, go ahead and burn this to a disc is up here where you click on iDVD or file rather there's this option down here so there's burn to a DVD there's save as a disk image and there's save as a video TS folder uh, for most people I wouldn't worry about this last image but if you get this project all done and it's perfect you love it and uh, you think there's a chance that you might um, 
burn you know want to burn this down the road again I would recommend not only burning it to a disc however many times you need to initially but also burning it to a disc image and putting that in like your archive folder for the project because what the disc image it does is that creates a file that essentially um, how it contains everything a DVD player would need so you know if you as time goes on and you move these pictures you move the photos iDVD starts losing track of this project and you have a hard time putting it back together if you've ever experienced the uh, a program that can't find a file after you've moved it this disk image will create uh, a file that's got everything you need to uh, burn this in disk utility which I haven't talked about but you could go into disk utility open this disk image and burn it to a disk and it would be just like you did the project uh, you know like you're doing right now but for now we're just going to close that because we don't even need to go up there we're just going to burn it to a disk and say burn DVD you can see there's a keyboard command uh, command R but uh, right down here I'm going to click on this uh, little circle and then uh, it's going to start burning so you can see it's going to prepare it's going to process and depending on the uh, size of your movie and the uh, obviously the quality of your computer it may or may not take a long time so I had that option to uh, create the uh, CD-ROM uh, for the photos so it's going to be doing that and iDVD has never uh, been really really quick so uh, I think you know, my machine is pretty quick and it's saying it's going to take about 17 minutes which that will probably decrease a little bit but this is typically one of those things when you would just uh, initiate the process and then uh, walk away I'm just going to cancel that because I don't need to burn that small project, ignore that.